Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 24 by 30 inch canvas, a big old commission for a client uh, named Barry who passed on this property. She was going to buy it, ended up buying a different place and uh, sent us a photo and said, I really like if you could paint this for me. And we decided to take on the commission and show you how we do it step by step, right? So uh, you're obviously excited about learning to paint this paint. So check the description down below, get all the colors you need, make sure you get your canvas nice and wet, get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. Holy, how did I get here? My goodness. All right, we have... Uh, Sap green, phthalo green, Prussian blue, the darker blues, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, cad yellow, bright red, and dark sienna. We already have our canvas prime with Bob Ross liquid white. Not a whole lot. Don't need a whole lot. And we're doing a commission in this case. And, uh... We're going to be looking off at a photo and trying to recreate it for a customer. So, let's see. First thing I want to do is we're going to go with a sunset. The customer wanted a sunset. So let's get our cad yellow down here on our tiny little two inch brush, nice and even across the whole bristles. You see that? And let's just start down somewhere, maybe over here. We'll just drop some of that yellow in there. We can even drop some of it down into our, what will be, you know, our foreground in here. We can even dump some of it down in there. Just some little soft little base color, right? Got our yellow up here. Going to want to progressively get darker, so we're going to come into our red, cover both sides. See how I flip the brush over so I can get both sides, get a little bit of red on that, tap it into our little section. Now look at the color, nice and deep red, right? Plus with the yellow that's in there, it's going to kind of mix with this yellow and make orange. It's going to be gorgeous. Just a little bit, right? See how we're kind of crisscrossing them? Just a little crisscross, it blends it back and forth like this. And then when we come in and we start to really blend our colors, you'll really notice how the crisscross pattern really works. Then we're gonna come back and grab our Prussian, or our, sorry, our Lizard and Crimson, right? It's progressively getting darker. So we went yellow, red, crimson, right? Now our brush is nice and dark. Gonna flip it over, tap it in, and then we'll come up here and just dump in a whole bunch of crimson. Just kind of filling it up so we have this little progression of color in here. And I cover the top of the canvas, of course, and the sides. Even though the buyer is going to frame this one, I still I have to cover the sides in my mind. It just won't let me do it. Won't let me do it without it. <clears throat> going to come back in, get more crimson. More crimson on the brush. Crimson on our brush, coming up in here. We'll have this really beautiful sunset. Now we're gonna go into the uh, blue, our Prussian blue mixed with our crimson on the, on the brush and it's gonna create this blue, gorgeous hue in our sky. Nice purpley color. Cover the top of the canvas and the bottom of the canvas and the sides. There we go. Even though they're going to frame it, I still have to do it. It just it doesn't work in my mind without it. Let's bring some of that blue color over here just so we can blend it together. And you see, this is why we add that buffer of red and crimson between our yellow and blue. We don't want them to go green. That would not be good. Take a little bit of our midnight black, kind of mix it in up here just so it changes the color up a little bit when we go to blend it, right? We'll have all these beautiful colors. Look at this. Fantastic looking sky already. Now let's wash our brush off. Right into the paint thinner, off into the can, and then into the bucket. And if you've never seen one of the videos before, this is the bucket that we talk about. It's got a golf ball basket down around the center. Just gives you a lot of bristle, a lot of places to beat the bristles, and it contains it inside the bucket. Nice, easy little way to keep everything from spraying all over the place. And the bucket's like $2. You get a cheap little bag, throw it in there. And then I just had that golf ball basket in my garage. Just use whatever you have, right? You don't have to go buy nothing special. Not a thing. Well, I'm trying to show you, you don't need anything special, right? All I'm doing over here is just trying to dab it off on a paper towel so it's not so wet. You can still see the brush is wet, right? But it's not so stinking wet and dunked in. Now we're gonna go into our lightest area and start to blend our sky. And you can see how we start these crisscrosses. It will start to drag color in 
pulling the yellow out, bringing the red in back and forth. And you make this gorgeous color all together like that. All right, staying around, now we're working our way into the red. I don't wanna to go too much into this dark area before we finish blending out anything that we want that's light, right? So maybe we'll add some of that reddish color, whatever we can pick up down here. Now that brush is gonna get covered in yellow. So we're gonna to need to wash it or switch to a different brush. Nice dry, flesh, fresh, clean brush. Because when I go with that yellow, I don't want the sky to turn green out here, okay? Now we're gonna start on the edge of the blue. Work its way into that crimson. Really, really working it. Really pushing hard. You push hard, you can blend all this stuff away. If you don't push hard, you'll leave some of it. And eventually be cool little streaks in your sky or something will happen and you'll step back and look and go, oh wow, look at that. That's, the, I didn't even know I could do that, right? There we go. Bring some of that purpley color in here. We'll bring it down. I think we got a pretty cool looking sky. Now, the more we work our way from this blue into the yellow, the more green it's going to go. So we either have to add red or we can add a cloud right here and kind of disconnect those two colors. Okay, let's wash off our blending brush. Gotta dab it off on a paper towel. Wash off this other one. Just the smallest little bit off into your can, into the bucket. Super easy, nice, easy, clean brush. Dab it off, paper towel, and we're good to go. All right, now let's decide what our clouds are gonna look like. You know what, today we can do it, we'll do it with a fan brush today, right? We'll do it both ways, we'll do it all kinds of ways. So we're gonna need our, our palette knife to mix it up first. And we need a little bit of white, but I don't wanna use just pure white. And first we need a shadow up there. So let's scoop up some of this blue, crimson, and black. Not a whole lot, right? Like equal parts of each. And then we'll come in here, mix it all up, scrape it up, pull it out flat. Wipe off our knife so it's somewhat clean and able to be worked with. There we go, nice and clean. Come in here, scoop up a little chunk, and maybe on this side, we'll start up in the corner up here and work our way down. And maybe we've got this giant bit of cloud that lives up in here, right? Almost looks like a little mountain. And we're just gonna scrub it in wherever it wants to live. It's literally it, it's all we're gonna do, scrub it into the canvas, right? I'm gonna take our one inch brush, we come in, we're going to start to shape it with our little circles. I'm going to shape it, shape it into this nice, beautiful, dark, purpley shadow of a cloud. Just by turning it into little circles like that, right? That's all we're going to do. Mix it up until you like the way that it looks. And you can leave it just like that without any highlight or anything on it. Or you can add something. In our case, we're going to grab a little bit of red, a lot a bit more white than red. Right? right, we're going to mix it up right here. That way we're not, you know, we don't have our brightest white furthest away from us. I don't like that. I kind of like to get brighter as we come and darker at the same time, and you'll figure out how. Okay, we're gonna come up in here, really just kind of lightly dump over whatever bit that we want our, our little cloud to look like. We can't cover up all the shadow, right? If we cover everything, then why did we put it down to begin with? I'm gonna come back in, knock off some of the paint onto that paper towel. The same old dirty brush, got a little bit of color to it. Just very lightly start to mix these bits of white in. And again, we're not trying to cover all of the, look at that as we come across. Woo, whew. Not trying to cover all of that dark shadow. You gotta leave it, all this stuff back here, right? Let's say you could blend it a little bit further back or take this one a little bit further up, kind of cover it a little bit, but you don't have to have a perfect shape. That's the best part about clouds. There is no perfect shape to a cloud. Swipe it up, swipe it across. Just like that, got a beautiful little cloud back there. Now let's switch to something else. We'll go with this red and let's say we'll make a little yellow color in there. Don't need a whole lot. Add a little white. And we'll mix this up into this kind of orangish color right here. Wipe off the excess, scrape it up, pull it out. We've got this little pile we can work with. And as we come down into our lighter areas, maybe there's a far off orangey cloud that just kind of hangs out back there in that yellow section. And again, you can take your brush very lightly, kind of pull it out in different ways, swipe it. If you want it real far away and real far off, you swipe it like that. Come over, grab a little bit of white, scrape up a little bit of that orange and mix it in with our white. That way it's a lighter color, right? A little bit lighter color. 
come over here, drop it on. And then I'm seeing that that might be a little bit too close. So let's add a little bit of white in there, just straight up white. Off the thing. Grab our brush very lightly, very, very lightly. Try not to cover up all of the under shadow, right? And I don't like it. It's such a straight line. There we go. That's much better. Again, take it, you can swipe it, you can swipe it up, you can give it some life, swipe it to the side, make this air flow like it's this far off thing, and then poof, we got this little cloud way back in the distance. It's fantastic. We can do one more up here, you know what we'll do? I love the chemtrails. We're gonna do a chemtrail. Or a contrail, condensive trail. People call it a chemtrail, but I call it a contrail. Here we go. One of these, we're gonna scrape, right off. You got to put a little bit of us humans out in nature. It's really fantastic and people will love it. And with these you can swipe up in different places because the wind will blow and it won't be the same bit of, you know, thing. It can't be this perfect, perfect line. And that is fantastic right there. A little bit of orangish chemtrail like it got lit up by the sky. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's scrape up all that because we're not going to need it much anymore. And we're going to make up a whole giant pile of this dark shadowy color for our trees and stuff, right? This gigantic pile because we're working on a big canvas and I want it to be very textured. So mixing it all up, scraping it up, and then kind of placing it into a place where we can access it. You know what we're gonna try today? We'll use the, we'll use the big bush making brush, the big round brush. Gonna really get it in there. <clears throat> just like that, nice and full. Nice and full, just like that, okay? We're gonna come in, and we have so many trees off in this thing, so let's do them sort of one at a time, and we'll kind of plan out, maybe the furthest one is off back there. We don't wanna go down too far, right? That's about as low as I wanna go. Everything else can be much taller. Let's see, and I don't want it to be this perfect color throughout. I want them to be darker in some spots, lighter in other areas, darker, lighter. So we're gonna come back, grab up some more paint, bring it up. We gotta push this cloud back, so he's gotta go away, right? Now we've got this other mass of tree in there. You know, this even needs to come up a little bit higher. And you gotta have them be different, different little things. Again, these are just the shadows. The base color underneath. So it doesn't have to perfectly match the tree shape that you want right now. We'll just kind of let them fade off back there in the distance. I do want them very dark down around the bottom though. So this one looks like another tree that's down around the bottom. But by the time we fade it all out and do everything, get our fog, start to place our horizon, then we'll know where we can go. Again, not even covering all the things, right? You can let some of that light show through. Gotta let some of that light show through. That's a gorgeous looking tree right there. Well, it's a whole mass of trees way off in our background, but that's what it's gonna be. And again, let's let it trail off. We're gonna make a whole bunch of fog out of the bottom of that. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. So we can take just a little bit of purpley, put it down here, just to have some shadows in whatever color we decide to choose. Very little bit, start to kind of blend our, look how bright that is. I wish that was water. It's not gonna be water though. Okay, let's take our two inch brush. We're gonna come up in here. I'm just gonna start to bring down this color. Different heights though, right? Can't just be a straight line. Ours is starting to kind of go up and down, bringing down the color. Tapping up here, bringing it down, then grabbing some more, pulling it down. See what I mean? Different heights, different angles. Also, we have this little bit of fog. It starts to grow at the base of our trees. Flip the brush over, it's starting to get too much paint on it, right? So we turn it over because we're only really using the top corner of it tap in and pull down. That's all we're really doing. Tapping in, pulling down. Man, look at that sky. 
That is fantastic. You don't want to have too much paint down here because we need to continue to add layers, right? I'm going to teach you about that. Now we're going to knock some of the paint off of that brush again just by smacking it on the edge of the, the uh, table with a paper towel and that way there's not so much paint on it. You see what I mean? Now we're going to grab this. Just make these circles. Look at that. Now we're going to have these floating trees off in the distance. Where is the horizon? Where are they sitting? Where are they growing from? Do they start down here? Do they start here? Where are they, right? It's a floating bit of trees, little floaters. And if we don't put too much paint, we'll save some of that pinkish color that we put down. And again, the yellowish color down here. So don't want to have too much paint on your brush. That's why you can always go knock the thing off on a paper towel. And then you come back up and you can literally test it. And you're like, there's not a whole lot of paint right there. It really isn't. It's not like it's dripping wet, right? Okay. <clears throat> Now let's get, let's get a brush. All right, well, if I can't find one, we'll just have to use a different one, right? So we're gonna come in here with our liquid, our low odor mineral spirits, dip them onto our thinnest part of that dark area right here. So it becomes nice and liquidy, right? Like if we tip our palette too much, it'll roll off. And we have, sorry about that, we have uh, this Meaden micro liner. This is the size two in the micro liner set. Very small little things where we can come in into the lighter areas and start popping out little tree trunks and bits of our branches that never got covered up. Different things that are growing up out of there, right? Sorry, my nose itches. Always does this to me on film. It's never when I'm not trying to do a tutorial that my nose is. It itches. It's all the dang time. Okay, we can always come back to those guys and do little things, little smaller branches, different little things. But in the lighter areas, it'll really stand out that these branches are back there holding up a lot of stuff. And again, this is all the shadow. It's going to be covered by different things. So you can't just do this and then leave it. You got to end up covering some of it, right? Little things, branches. I love the ones that poke out the top. They like didn't get enough. There's not enough water coming up the tree for those guys to, to continue to pop leaves onto it. And so they just stick out the top. Look at that. Little things start happening. Fantastic little things, lovely. Oh, it's holding up all these branches. What is it? Oh, the little branches I see. All right, we're gonna wash that little brush out in the paint thinner and then just wipe it on a paper towel. Well, not paint thinner, odorless mineral spirits, but you know what I mean. You know, we didn't get the last guy over there. Let's get this guy one, couple little things. You never even know what's gonna be seen. So you don't even have to worry about making them perfect because you're gonna eventually cover most of it. All right, let's see. We got these gigantic things. It comes down. We have our clouds. Everything. The sky is gorgeous. Need a little bit of green, and uh, gonna stick our building in. All right, our building's gonna come. If I can do this, just as a there's nothing on the brush. You can see. I'm just gonna try to line out the building in my eye, and you can always change it. Right, you can go back and erase things, do different things. If that's our roof, that's way too, firstly, that's way too, uh, <clears throat> way too wrong of an angle. Here we go. So we'll use our mall stick, which is not, in our case, is just a, a yardstick that you can rest on your easel while you're doing little minute things, right? So the shape is very important for this one. It's very flat roof, this thing. So that's the roof shape there. And then it comes down and it's very, it's just like a sliver sliver of the roof is all you see and then we're going to come down and then we'll have our next little layer of the roof which is over there and then it kind of comes this way all right we got it we got it in my mind there's the door in the end you have the whole front you have the little bit of the roof goes down comes down over here goes down again comes down the door is right in the middle and that's kind of the plan for what the building looks like. Kind of a neat looking old building. So first we need to make up a shadow for that guy. And since I love using that purpley shadow, we've already got enough made up right here. We can literally piece it out just based on what we can see in the photo, okay? Now all we're really doing is making shapes, if you think about it like that. All we're doing is making a square, we're making a triangle, we're making a diamond, we're making a stretched out rhombus. Whatever we're making, 
you just follow that shape and that's what it's going to be. Okay, so let's say if our roof is like that, let's, and that was supposed to be the doors, the roof is right above the doors, we're going to put it right here. Okay, so we're going to come down, and that's going to be the front of the building. Okay, we're going to bring it down like this, just making a shape, right? Just making a little house shape, because that's what I see initially in the front of the building, right? Then there's a wall, and then there's a square shape that goes off this way, on this angle, okay? Now, the doors, the top of the doors is here. So, and then your building can grow down as far as it wants. It doesn't have to all just fit in this little area. Okay, so that was the thing. So then we have a little bit of our roof pitch right here. So all this is wood. Okay, now we'll come over to this side. We have that. Our roof's gonna come off of it just a littlest bit. Bam, so just that little area, we come down, we go over again this way, same angle. All right, so all that is building now. And that looks cool. And then a little piece of the roof comes off the end. It's starting to look good. We got our, our bit of roof here, which is gonna go back and then over. That's the side of the roof. It's actually going to be a sharper angle. But that's the part about filling it in that I like. You can start to do things in your mind, right? So we got that whole thing, which this needs to get bigger. So we have our roof there, which you really can't see much of. And then the side of our building over here. It's a cool little thing. We can add two little, we can do a little sliver of a roof, I guess. As that comes down there, this comes down there. Off the back. It'll look really neat. Okay, so now this is the, the shadowy side of our building right here. One side has to be darker than the other, right? So we're going to add a little bit of the, more of this paint. Let it grow down at these angles and we'll start to shape our house or our building there we go very nice I like that down and then goes down this way a little bit further we'll end up covering that with something but that looks good right there now where was the side the side was about right there so that's gonna be all the front. This will be all the side of the building. And then we have our bit where our doors are gonna be. All right, we're just making the building a little bit taller. There we go. And then we gotta remember in our minds what's gonna be high lit, what isn't gonna be. And poof, we got a little barn right out there just like that. Gonna wash this fan brush off. Now we got a highlight. It almost looks white, the roof. But if I put white on there, it's going to look like white snow. So we're going to have to try to mix it gray or something, right? A little bit of white. Teeniest little bit of black down here. Where are we going to put it? Over here. Let's mix that up into like this silvery grayish color. Because we don't want to just put white, right? It didn't just snow over here. I think this is in Texas. It did not just snow just now. Let's see if we can't fill in our little white section of roof which isn't really white, it's silver, but you know what I mean. There we go, that looks very similar. Very similar to the picture right there, okay. Now we're gonna make up some, a little bit of our dark bit of our roof, things off the side, just a little over the top, a little line around the edge, just give it a little bit of life. Just gives it that little extra bit. Different little shadows, different little things happening, right? Gotta have our differences in color, Josh. That's what you always tell us. Okay, let's make up our uh, little bit of white, a little bit of brown. Where's our brown town gone? Just put it right in over the top of that gray right there. Now we're gonna take up a little bit because we don't need a whole lot. Don't wanna have too much, All right? Pull it down, turn our knife, match our angles again, pull it down again. Doesn't have to be so super bright. Right, we 
bring it over here, pulling it down, just match the angles, pull it down. Doesn't have to be really textured. If you just kind of scrape it in there like that, you can keep it sort of thin. Not really trying to scrape anything off, but you know what I mean, you can keep it sort of thin like that. A little bit back there. And we got a little bit over here. Let's see. Just like that. We're gonna make that side a little bit darker. So we need a little bit more of that dark. And just really make it darker back there. Take a little bit. Oh, I mixed up some of that white. Let's see. That's where our roof line was. A little, a little bit of a roof back there. Need to fill in this guy underneath. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. We have shaped our little barn. Looks fantastic. Nice and old and jaggedy. Come up, fill our, our piece of wood in that was missing right there. We got a good looking little house, guys. Or barn or whatever this was. It looks good to me. Got to get a little bit of that dark color. Throw it on top. Let it hang over just a little bit. Boom. Just like that. Man, that's fantastic. Really like that. Really like that a lot. Let's get a little bit of dark underneath the pitch of our roof over here. Maybe a little bit underneath the pitch of the roof over there. A little bit of shadow. That's almost too much. But we can always go back. And yeah, a little bit of brown. Yeah, and just shape it how you want it, right? Really that simple, guys. It's that simple. And again, you just sit there and play with it as much as you want. Change things, add things. Don't make it too bright, though. Now, I believe this one has a window or a door. Some point there, we need to connect our bits of roof, too, to make it all make sense. There we go. Just like that. Bring our little bit of highlight down underneath it. So we have that little bit of roof line. Looking fantastic. There's like a design over the top of the roof, I think. The top of the doors. All right, we're going to scrape away a little hole here. Take a little of our dark color and just poof, drop it right in. Get this little dark window up in the top. Fantastic, guys. Fantastic. All right, we're going to mix up a little bit more of our brown, a little bit of our white. We're going to mix that up, but we're not going to overdo it. Okay, we're going to cut into that. And then we're going to make the shape of our, or the, you know, the wood of our doors. And we actually need a little bit of shadowing behind there first. Just to help it give it depth. You can't just go light on top of light on top of light on top of light, right? A little bit of depth in our doors back there. You can get it to actually mush in on the bottom. That would be fantastic. It doesn't matter how far you come down. Remember that. Okay? Does not matter. Take a little bit of our black. Line the edges of the stable doors. Just like that. Doesn't even need to be perfect. Okay, a little bit in there. There's a beam in the center. And then there's a couple X-shaped beams on each door. So we got to get our angle right. And we'll put some X-shaped beams on this door. Just like that. Cool little things. And not every detail is going to be seen. Remember that. You're never going to see every single thing. So don't worry about it, man. You don't have to paint everything. Let's see. There looks to be like a, a white be or a lighter colored beam of wood in there. Making this square shape. But it's really, it's just the pieces of wood that aren't really doing much but holding the building up. You know what I mean? Now, speaking of which, those little beams... We need to add in. All right, get all these little wood planks holding everything up. You can carve in all sorts of shapes and stuff doing that. Let's see. Let's put a little bit of shadowing underneath here and pull it down just the littlest bit. Because right, the sun is setting, so compared to the photo that we're looking at, it won't be exactly the same. 
won't be exact. There we go. Look at that, guys. It's looking really good. I like this one. That's why I love doing commissions, because sometimes you get some really cool stuff you're given to kind of make people remember something or, you know, it's neat. It's fun. It is very fun. There's a bit of our silver roof that got lost. There we go. Makes more sense in my mind now. All right. <clears throat> Let's very lightly just take the bottom and we're just going to shape out what it looks like, right? Making our angles correct. Now we're at the front. This is again why it doesn't really much matter as long as you come down far enough. There we go. And then the more and more we pull that out, the more the land is going to grow in front of it, right? But I don't want to get too far away. I'm going to put a couple little details over here. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back and highlight that, uh, all these trees back there. We start getting too far ahead of ourselves, guys. That's a cool looking little building though. I like that. Okay, why not? Let's put a couple little, little things that are going to live back there. And they kind of grow down. That's all down fog down here. So don't worry. You're like, Josh, what are you doing? Don't worry about it, man. Okay. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'll show you guys, it's much more difficult to go back in and make the fog, but it is possible to do. It is a possibility to do. There we go. And that looks nice. Now we got some little bit of darkness sort of kind of around our, our little house. Look at that, oh yeah. A little bit of light, a little bit of dark. Always gotta mix those guys up. The ones that you can really see, you really wanna mix up the bottom of those so they're not just sticking out blatantly like that, right? Now we'll go back and highlight them. Let's get all this thick, dark color off of our brush. And we're gonna get some liquid white. We're gonna pull into our greens over here. The liquid white just helps the, the thicker paint stick to that thinner paint back here, okay? So we're gonna tap it in. We don't need a whole lot because we're just gonna come up lightly. Every so often, gonna add a little bit of green to it. All right, coming up above, above the shadow in some cases, below the shadow in other cases. Different places, different things, different colors, right? The brush is going to want to start to go dark on you. So be careful where you start putting different things, right? Oh, look at that. Look at all those little bits of green in there. Woo! A little bit of fogginess. You can't really tell where the bottom is. Now we're going to grab some of the phthalo green in here to be a little bit darker. A little bit more liquid white just to help it stick. Right? It can't be too thick or it's not going to stick on there. And grab this up. Maybe this one's, ooh, it's a little bit different. Look at how those things just pop up and change. Different little things happening at different places of our painting, right? Woo! Like the, just, the sun just caught a hold of those guys. And they're bright. Right up on the top. Oh, man, look at that. It's fantastic. But you see how we're changing? We're putting them in different places. We're not picking the same color and just murdering it to death. Wash all that off. Dab it on our paper towel. Back over here to the... The liquid white, and let's go into the yellow. We need a little bit more liquid white. There we go. Just to make it wet. Gotta be wet enough, right? Let's say there's a little bit of yellow that just caught right in there. Damn, why not? A little bit up here. Woo! Fire. It's so fire. Look at that. Oh, man. A little bit of yellow over there. Maybe a little bit caught down here from the different light, the rays of the sun. We'll go back over here, go to that more sappy green green, right? Because we don't need a whole lot. Throw it in here, but not covering up all of our dark areas. We need it to be bright. We need it to be dark. You can't cover everything all at once. Yeah, a little bit more. Now what's happening? No one knows. Nice and dark over here too, I like that. Not even overdoing it. 
because we need to continue to add and add and add and add and add layers of paint. So we can't overdo it, all right? A little bit, a couple little bounces into the, the bit of our fog. So we can really kind of just make those things a little softer. There we go. A little softer. Look at that thing just pop right out. There we go. All right, just dragging up, dragging some of that color, allowing some of that green and yellow and all those different things to come down in here into our little bits of fog. And then again, we can just do that. The more and more paint that we mix up and the more and more colors that we do, the harder it's gonna to be to continue to add layer upon layer upon layer, right? So let's grab up some of our, some of our uh, dark sienna brown, a little bit of our white color. We'll just make a little bit of a tannish brown color over here. Gonna grab the bottom of this guy and start to pull it out. Look at that. We, we decide where our horizon lives, right? What's happening? What's going on over there? Literally going to the edge of nothing. All right, over here, angles, most important. Gotta have your good angles, otherwise every, it's not gonna look flat. Everything's gonna look strange. Always about angles. We'll push it over here. We have a little bit more of that. A little bit more of that guy. Push it off back there. Every so often, you dump a little bit of darker brown. That's okay. It's going to look like a different little thing in our, in our little hill. Or the way that the farm is laid out. Different little things happening. Look at all this light color. I don't want to lose all that. Don't want to lose it all. There we go. Just going over these so they stay a little bit soft. Bam, 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 bam. All right, we're all done. See you later. Bye bye. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> now, it looks as though there's a bit of fence. So we're going to have to make up a lot of bit of fence color. And our fence sits up there. It's very much kind of brownish. We'll do a little bit of grass first. Why don't we do it with this brush? That's fine. A little bit of grass, a little bit of green on the edge here. We're just going to pop in the different little things as they come in. Different little, little differences, little bits of grass, some over here, some over there. Not a whole lot because it's not a grass in the picture. It's not a really grassy field, right? There's a couple little greener areas and stuff like that. But for, for the most part, not too grassy and not too green. So we'll just kind of go over them. We have this cool little bit of grass growing outside the front. Very plain in the back. So now it's time to stick our, our fence posts in. So we're going to just make them like this and they come over and they come over. I'm trying to make them very, very small though. We don't need them to be very large or, you know, in the foreground of the painting. It doesn't have to show a whole lot of fence. Let's see. We'll do that. Then the next one will come up. Don't want to make them too big, too spread apart. They are very far away, a little bit of fence. All right. Now, every so often, there's going to be a little piece that goes down. All, right. All we're really doing is putting in half of the pole right now. It's just half the shadow. Little bit, little things that we can pull out, give shadows to, just by touching. Just by touching and pulling down. Then we can slide them out into different things. Different little shadows. Different stuff. All right. Now we got to come up with a little bit of wood color for that. So we'll go with our brown. A little bit of our white. Scrape it up. Put it over here. Don't want to make it too much the same color brown. Don't want to make it too bright. Don't want to make it too dark. So we're going to test it. And we're going to come over in our first little half. Looks like that. It looks like a good color to me. And we're just putting half of it on the other side of that shadow. Right? Not trying to cover the shadow, just trying to make them meet. Just meet in the middle. That's all we're really doing. Okay, scrape up a little bit more of that. We're going to come make the tops. Trying not to cover all the dark. And again, it's an old fence. This one got left behind, right? 
That's what you tell yourself anyway. This one got left behind for the crows and no one's really maintained it. It's got these old little things and differences and, you know. Because again, it's not the, even the one that's in the foreground. This is far away fence. All right, let's take these. Now we can start to pull them out at the same angles of our grass back there and really stick our fence back. All right, depending on where we put the, pull out his legs, depends on where he lives. So you can see it start to turn, but we're trying to do it as, about as straight as we can get it. A little bit of downward pull, a little bit of straight. Look at that. And just from that other green that was on the brush in there, you get these cool little things happening from our little fence. And because we're pulling down the same angle, all these things look like shadows from our fence and different things. And you can even add a shadow. You can add a bit to the top too if you wanted. Just very lightly though. Don't need a whole lot. Just enough to where we can... Right? Things that aren't in the photo. Damn. Just so there's little differences there. Different little things. Put something there if you want. Or really give them a once over again. Make it much softer, much harder to tell. Harder to tell. There we go. Damn. Cool little things going on. Little differences, little things happening. There we go. I like it. Very cool, very cool. All right, what else is going on in this picture? We've got something that comes in from the right. But it's hard to tell. It's like another little bit of fence, but it's down a little bit lower. So let me do it here. We're only going to paint about that much of it. Just a couple legs. And the reason we're doing that is because, again, it's not the focal point of the painting. It's this little bit of fence kind of trapping in the animals. And yeah, we might as well make it continue, though. We might as well make it continue in front of the fence, the front of the, the barn. Makes sense if it did that. Just a little bit over the top, a lot of it underneath. Take our brown just on the one side and the top and the top bam we got our old little bit of fence out there all right take it shape it pull it out pull it out pull it out yeah cool little things happening right it even wants it wants more it wants to go to the door in my eyes so that's what we'll make it do We'll make it go to the door. Damn. Very simply done, guys. And depending on how you pull it out is depending on how it's shaped. This is like a little corral. Looks very cool. We need to bring in the other set of, uh, the other set of fence as well. So let's make up some more colors. Some black, crimson, and blue. Get more of our little shadow action going. Right there, right there. Scrape it up, pull it down. Scrape it up, pull it down. Okay. Now we've got a little bit more shadow we can work with. Let's do, let's do the fence first, okay? Now we're gonna come down here below our fence and we've got another little section, right? Maybe this guy's got a little upward turn or it comes down or it goes in front or it's over there. All kind of different things. Scrape up a little bit more of that dark. Now our fence has to be bigger now because this one's in front of us. Okay, this one's in the front of that one. It's much bigger, there's much more detail. So we have to be, go a little bit slower on this guy. Right out to there, looks cool. Put our little fence ender. Got that, got that. These guys are gonna be split apart a little bit more because they're closer as well. Can't have the same distance between all the fence posts, right? And this fence post is sort of strange because there's three in it. 
Oh, it's like that in the last one, I just couldn't tell. So let's do this. Why don't we put another section in there? Damn. Looking good. Coming in here. These are going to be much more spread apart. They're not going to come down as far because it's just a, it's like an odd shape. It's not a perfect circle or a straight line. Put that guy over there. And this guy, we'll put him on the end. Just drop in some of that color in so we can pull it out. Mix it in with our with our uh, our other highlight color and all sorts of stuff, right? And then we've got one that comes off this way. So he comes not down. I'm not sure what happened, guys. Glad I checked the camera when I did, though. Otherwise, we'd have gone way too far, right? We'd have gone way too far. I just had this sneaky suspicion that something was wrong. Okay, a little bit of uh, black, crimson, uh, phthalo green, Prussian blue, whatever you want. Nice and dark color. And throw the green in there, though, so we have a little bit of green up in our thing. And this beautiful, beautiful painting, and this beautiful sky has a lot of stuff all over it. So we've got lots of like foliage to cover in different places all over the painting, right? Comes down from above really cover over it kind of shows through so it covers up in here shows through over there this nice little opening and down in here it's just all covered and gross and nasty there we go now we got all these little bits of tree branches and stuff that come and hang down over the top like we're just sitting underneath this guy and then over here, we have this giant bit of tree or a bush or something that comes out and sits, comes over and covers over in front of this fence even. Right out over our fence. It's gonna sit right down there. It's a beautiful painting. I like a beautiful composition for a painting. That's why I like when the, when the owner, the, the buyer came and said, I'd like you to paint this painting. I was like, absolutely, look at that. It's like the perfect, there we go. It's the perfect composition for a painting. It's fantastic. We gotta cover all that up back there. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna do a, a little bit of a bush coming off the top over here. And it might even end up looking like it's back behind, which would look cool came back over and did all that. Just kind of covering over, filling in where our bushes are going to be, right? Don't like how straight that was, though. There we go. Okay. Come in, we're going to refill in our edge of our tree. That guy back there, this one's in front of him. Looks awesome. And then there's a little bit down around the bottom. I'm gonna pull this guy out. This was a beautiful house. Apparently the the buyer they were gonna buy this one or they're leaving this one. I can't really remember actually. Either they were gonna buy it or they're leave or they they didn't buy it or they thought they were gonna get it and they ended up not getting it. But it meant a lot to him, so. We decided to paint it today. Look at that, that's fantastic. A couple little grassy things, little bits, little stuff, little things happening. It'd be really, really cool. Let's see what we're gonna look like over here as we pull this guy out. Where's he gonna live? Just like that. Just like that. That's very cool. I don't even wanna go all the way over. I like that it doesn't connect. There are different things that come in from the edge, but they, they don't really connect to anything. There's no branches even that connect them. So let's leave it like that. We come in again, grab our low odor mineral spirits into our kind of dark color mixture. Wanna have it really runny though, really runny. And then let's come off and we're gonna make all sorts of little, little tree branches that come off of this guy. 
little things. They go all sorts of places. Dip down, they're reaching out, and they're all uncovered, which I like. I love uncovered tree branches. And they like reach down and cool little things. They are my favorite to paint. They want to reach off and grab something. Like, hey, over here. Over here. There we go. Almost like a little broken bit of tree branch. They can crisscross over, back and forth, do all sorts of things. But you want to make sure you have enough paint thinner to keep everything nice and wet and flowing smoothly across the canvas. If it's becoming too hard and too difficult to get them to move, you need to go back in and get some more. Kind of adding some darker shadow underneath this guy. Just to give it some depth and, sh and change, you know what I mean? A little bit of darker area, a little bit of lighter area helps it change and gives it more turn and more realism, really. Let's see, maybe there's another bigger branch that came off and fed these guys up there. Maybe came down from above. You get all sorts of stuff that happens. Many, many things going on out of frame in this painting that we don't even know where they came from. And we got branches off of these guys. One over here, coming up there, up into here. Different little things growing off of our, our little guy. Woo, starting to look good. All right, maybe we sneak a big one out over here. Right in front of that guy, too. Bam, just came up, wanted to be right up in front. I was like, hello, let me see you. I love doing these little kinds of trees. All sorts of things happening. Little branches, little stuff. It's fantastic, and it's so much fun. Right? Oh, maybe one of these guys came out of the trunk of the tree over here. And he wanted to be part of the party. Never know. Never know. So try. See what it looks like. Try something out. Tell me it doesn't look cool when you did that or whatever. It is a lot of fun. Let's see. And the more you do, the more people will appreciate them. Like, oh, wow, I can't believe we did so many little branches on that tree. It looked and it ended up looking awesome. And you're like, hey, thanks, brah. Thanks, brasif. There we go. Cool little things. I just I don't want to stop. Ends up looking so neat. I do want to have a lot of paint thinner though. If you got to go back to your cup a few times, go back because you want it in there. You got to have it thin so it'll come off of the brush very thinly and leave a lot of that dark color on there without having to work so hard. You don't want to have to push the brush in and have to work so hard to get it. And they don't even all need to be the same color. It gives it different highlights and different little things. Oh, it's fantastic. It does have like one very small little reachy branch. They come off at different points and they're just reaching as far out as we can get them to reach. Very little though, very small. Very little pressure even, because you don't want them to reach out that far. Man, that looks really cool. Really, really cool, Josh. All right, let's throw a little bit of uh, bush right in the front here and we'll call it good. Again, black, crimson, blue, a little bit of our phthalo green even. And then we'll highlight some of these bushes and then we'll be done. Mixing it all up, all gross. Ugh. Look at that color. It's like one nasty dark color. There we go. I'm gonna grab it up onto our big old bush making brush again. Very thick and textured this time because we're right here in the front. So let's go with this crazy, big old thick bush right here. Very fingery, wants to come out and say hello. Say, hey guys, you forgot about me. All right, pull them out at different heights, different places, give it a rounder feel, kind of going off towards the end over here. That's cool. We can get our smaller brush, come in here to the green, and really come up and just highlight different areas of this with the brush almost upside down. See what I mean? Different things, different little greens popping in at different angles all over the place. 
wanting different results, right? So if we pop it at different angles, we'll get different results. I think it's one of these guys has like, yeah, there's a couple, a couple little guys that have like a little bit of something off the end that are growing out here, like little, little puffs. This looks cool. A little bit more green, popping it in over on this side, but not covering up everything, right? Just having that little difference in there, those little bright areas are what they're going to be looking for. Not trying to cover all of our shadows either. That looks neat. I like it. I like it. Okay, we're gonna come in here, drop some of the liquid white, come over, grab up some of the yellow, really mix that yellow into our green. It would help if we could get it, there we go. Our green and yellow mixture right into the liquid white. And then very lightly up on this guy, we're gonna to touch, very light. You can see all these little places that are reaching out, waiting to grab something, right? Not even gonna highlight the whole guy. Just like that. Gotta have a lot of shadowy areas in there, right? pop of a bit of bright green to come out. Different little things. Look at that, it's fantastic. Fantastic. So much paint in the brush. All right, let's wash this other brush off. See what else we need to do. <clears throat> I'm gonna highlight that guy over there. So a little bit more liquid white into our green. Almost forgot this guy over here. Different little things that are happening in there, right? It's not all the same little bush. That's not all the same shape of our little highlights. We could bounce them in even and do different things, right? Doesn't always have to be the same. And down here, it's more yellow, it pops out more. Cool little things happening. Leave those dark areas though. Gotta leave them dark. Don't wanna have the whole tree showing. All right. Again, we're gonna take the little bit of green that's on there, pull it down at different angles. Shape the way our tree is kind of hanging over itself, especially if you can pull it down and have that, you know, arc underneath. It'll look like there's a bit of, you know, overhanging bit of uh, land. Looks really cool. There we go. I'm not trying to cover up all of the, the brown or anything like that. I love that. I love how bright it is right here. It's just like this, oh, right behind the, the bit of the cabin. The sun shining down. It's just fantastic. I love it. All right, let's see. We could do a whole nother tree. We could do a whole nother bush. We could cover that whole thing up if we really wanted to, but I really like it. it looks good. Where's my bush making brush? <laughs> Put some of our highlight back on here. Back there. Just a little bit of that greenery, just a different change, a little different, you know, hue, different brightness to it because there's less paint on the brush, but we'll have that green kind of feel to it. Man, that looks really cool. I really like that. Really neat. <clears throat> Dirty. Here is my little liner brush. Oh, little liner brush, where are you? All right, we're going to go here and add in a part of my signature, which is the three birds. And those three birds signify myself, my wife, and my daughter. We're going to put them over here today. Use the old mall stick. Just like that, like they're flying in. Coming in, flying over Barry's house to say hello. Looks well, really, really neat. Now we can come back in here in these different little places, add in little scrapes of our tree branches and little stuff that's holding up this big old monster. Coming out of the dark areas. Got my daughter's alarm going off. There we go. Look at all these things that are just living down here, kind of growing, holding up all that stuff. Really cool. Really, really neat. Now we can take a couple little imperfections in our in our dirt. Just little things. Little action, little shadows, little things that happen. 
and even over here as we come closer to our to our guy. Cool little things. Swipe them over. Just little differences for your eyeball. Little shadows, little things. You can even add back our our shadows of our legs. Right, just like that, just because we like them so much. At the right angle. Just like that. Get these cool little things, different little things happen. Little bits of grass, little bits of shadowing, little bits of hills and valleys and peaks and all sorts of stuff. There we go. Just like that. Oh, that looks fantastic. If we get some grass growing behind these little bits of fence post growing up from the bottom. Always got to have something growing from the bottom of your fence. What kind of fence do you have if you not have something growing from the bottom of it? There we go. And all it is is a little bit of shadow and it kind of cleans up, cleans up the base. Cleans up the base of our, our little poles. Man, it looks cool. It's really, really neat, guys. I really like it. All right, should we shadow the tree or not? I mean, I love the way that it looks, but we might as well. We'll get some white, get some brown, bring them over here, mix them up real good. A little bit more brown, grab some of that in, bring it around our tree. At the same angles that you think the tree would be growing in. See what I mean, how we're turning? Gotta turn it and then we can go back just kind of mush it out, make it nice, bring it to that dark side. So there's a darker side to our tree and a lighter side to our tree. There we go. Maybe we get some light up on the top of that guy. Or light around the front right here. Different little things, different little differences. Call them differences for a reason. Bam, 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 bam. A little bit on the bottom of that guy. That's a different color now. Just change it up wherever you think it would be, wherever the sunlight's gonna hit. Maybe on the top of that guy, or over there, or here, or there, or there, or there, or there, or there, or there. Grabbing, reaching up into the, the thing. It looks fantastic. Too much dark, here we go. This guy's gonna come over here. Cool little things happening. Getting darker and darker as the tree goes down though. You don't have to be so super bright down there. Over here, get a little bit on that guy. Got a little, have a little bit up here. Just different little light areas that are catching on our, our tree. They look fantastic. fan freaking tastic a little bit going up into the tree over there and then we can brighten it if we want and do different things really make it stand out as part of the foreground in this painting just like that wrapping around different angles different ways all sorts of things happening in this tree and i love it the more and more you go over it, the more it's going to mix with the colors underneath and it's going to get dark. So be careful. What do you want it to look like, right? That's what you got to decide. Okay, let's throw the signature on this guy and we'll call it done. Let's see. We'll do it over here. Uh, yeah, we'll do it over here. And come over there. Just like that. We'll call this guy done. Now we got to go edit it. So we can put out a tutorial for you guys, right? Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> well, I have a mountain of brushes I need to go clean up. So thank you for watching the video. Thank you for sending in the stars and becoming a member of the Super Squad on YouTube and all the things that you do to help pay for the channel and really, you know, they really help us. So we're trying to get an iPad. We're trying to, you know, buy more canvases. We can keep doing more free videos and stuff. So, you know, things like this help. Nice big commissions that are worth a lot that we can send out. Helps us buy a lot more supplies and keep going, right? So. 
There are ways that you can support us without any monetary value. You don't have to buy us a, a thing. You can uh, share the videos, share the links, like, tap. Make sure you like this video uh, before you're finished watching it. Tap it a thousand times if you're watching it you know, through Facebook Watch. Click it once if you're watching through YouTube. Like it, share it, send it out to the world, send it to your grandma, send it to your best friend and say, hey, this guy's pretty cool. Come over and check him out and watch him paint, right? So besides that, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. We'll see you on Sunday or Wednesday or Friday or whenever we decide to paint and go live. And until then, you guys have a good evening and we'll see you later. Hi, welcome to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 24. Hi, welcome to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 20. Hi, welcome to Paint with Josh. Holy shit, I'm falling over. Hi there, welcome to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 24 by 30 inch canvas. Nice big commission for a client. Uh, and it really came out fantastic. This beautiful little farm scene. I just, I can't get over how great it is. You obviously like the way it looks. You wanna learn how to paint it. So check the description down below. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get all the colors you need. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're gonna do it just like this. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we're doing a 24 by 30 inch canvas. Uh, why can't I do that? Hey guys. <laughs>